Thomas is an anarchist, whose crimes have finally caught up with him. And no, it's not because he posted in the Audi forums saying that if Haldex is real quattro, then Pitbull is real rap music, which he did do. And it's not because he posts photos of his own car to Facebook groups asking, you on here, bro? Just to flex. It's because he told his British co-host James that it would be a good idea to spend another freezing winter in Canada reviewing crossovers. But James has taken matters into his own hands, and today there are no crossovers in sight. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And today we want to tackle a conundrum that James has actually had. If you're looking for an affordable, all-wheel drive, everyday car, do you get a rugged WRX? Or do you get a base trim? A classy, Al classy Audi. The WRX. This is the car that you get if you're looking for an all-wheel drive, everyday car with a performance twist. Or you can get something with the same amount of torque and German and classy. Welcome to the 2020 Audi A3. And yes, it's true, our interest in this comparison is also one of a personal nature. My 2006 WRX has seen better days, and it's missing some creature comforts found in newer cars. We've already tested some funky all-wheel drive options in the last year, including the new Mazda 3 and A-Class hatch. But what happens when you take two brands, both known for their rallying past, and compare their economy all-wheel drive compact sedans? Because like the fully decked out WRX, the A3 is a hair less than $40,000 Canadian, and packs what seems to be on paper a suitable amount of power, a Quattro branded all-wheel drive system, four doors, elegant looks, and some modern tech. By all measures, it should be the perfect little all-year-round car. But my guess is that the A3 is going to be a little bit too sedated, a little bit too put together. So that's why I've brought out a classic, the WRX. But the 2020 WRX is not without change. There are some new brakes available in this trim level, but most importantly, apparently Subaru has addressed the rev hang issue, which I'm eager to see the result of. But other than that, this is just a simple all-wheel drive four-door car, and one that has dominated Canadian winters for years. But the question is, can it stand up next to a premium German luxury competitor? Let's find out. And a big thank you to HJ Faf in Newmarket for letting us use their Audi A3. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. So yes, they both have the exact same amount of torque and they're both turbocharged, so you have access to that torque down nice and low. But this has more horsepower and a manual transmission. Yes, the manual is good, but you can get this car in a CV. A CV. CVT. I'm just kidding, actually. The CVT is really good in these. If anything, I feel sick because I just had like 14 tacos for lunch and the ride is really stiff. Now, if we were doing the base WRX, we actually considered getting the Mazda 3 all-wheel drive, but having driven the Mazda 3 all-wheel drive, we no longer considered getting the Mazda 3 all-wheel drive. It's nice, but it's not fast. This is, and I know a lot of people criticize this for being a golf. Well, they're right because it is, kind of, and it's actually got the GTI motor. But do you ever really need more than that? Because it pulls nicely. And if you care for the acceleration figures, this hits 100 kilometers an hour in just over six seconds, whereas the WRX does it in about five and a half. This is an FA engine, it's not an EJ. So it has a twin squirrel turbocharger and you have access to that torque very down low in the rev range, which makes this very usable for everyday living. Now the big news here is that Subaru has eliminated the rev hang for 2020. That's a big deal because the rev hang was really, really bad in these, especially shifting from first to second. You'd have to wait a long time for the revs to fall before you could release the clutch. Otherwise you'd get a jolt in the car. It's a lot better now. It's not perfect. The revs still fall kind of slowly, but it's a lot, a lot better. 
That said though, the whole shifting experience of the WRX is not perfect. The clutch is kind of weird and numb and the bike point's really, really high. And I don't really like the feel of the shifter. But it is nice to have a manual. Once you get used to it, it's still a really fun car to drive. One thing that's hard to demonstrate while trying to crush a back road is what these cars are like to live with. And for me, I've been a bit under the weather lately. I feel like everyone has. This has been incredibly kind to me. The seven speed S-Tronic gearbox stays out of your way. It's not particularly aggressive, even if you switch into sport mode. It's still pretty slow to change up, but it's just easy. But the reason we're here today is that these are both all wheel drive cars. This has an all wheel drive system that in my opinion is better than the Haldex system in that Audi because this is a center viscous differential, which is constantly applying power to the front and the rear moving it around depending on how the wheels are slipping. But it is all time all wheel drive. So when I'm on a back road like this and I put my foot down, it does this kind of Subaru crawl, rocket you down the road thing, which they, all Subarus do this. Obviously the STI is better with the adjustable center diff, but this one is still very much a WRX. It still crawls its way through back snowy roads. One other thing that's worth loving about this car is the actual size of it. Running around the city, parking this, it's small and you pay for that in some respects, and we're gonna go over that when we talk about the interior. But don't forget, as easy as this is to drive, it's no Sonata, it's no Camry, it has Quattro. So I'm in the snow, and it just goes. And I know what you're thinking, oh, it's Haldex, that's not real Quattro. Yes, it's true, the A4 does have an all-time Torsen Quattro system. The Haldex system waits to lose traction before it moves torque to the rear wheels, so this, is normally a front wheel drive bias car. But the Haldex is a cheaper system and it gets to fit in small cars like this and the Golf. But the issue is, is that the Haldex system sits as predominantly front wheel drive unless the car's brain decides to send power to the rear. As you can see here, the front wheels spend a lot of time spinning before the rear reacts. Now the WRX, at least in manual transmission form, has a passive mechanical full-time all-wheel drive system. It starts with a roughly 50-50 torque split and then moves the power around as necessary. It's not the best, but you can feel the difference on a snowy road. But comfort is honestly the biggest issue that I have with this car. These Recaros are a little bit too narrow for me, and the ride is bouncy. It chops like this vertically. And the noise that comes from the road is really substantial, especially with snow tires on like I have right now. In no way at all is this a refined experience. And I'm sure that that's the thing that James has been enjoying the most about that Audi. Overall, the WRX is still a very good vehicle to drive every day. There are compromises, but I still like it. The steering is sharp, the driving position is fantastic. The way that it goes around a corner is very flat and confident, and I don't really have that many serious complaints about this car. I never really have. The STI is better in certain ways, and the WRX is better in others. The best way to think of the A3 Quattro is if you ever wanted an all-wheel drive version of the Golf GTI without going all the way up to the Golf R, which is much more expensive, that's what this is. This is an all-wheel drive, easy to live with, Golf GTI with an Audi badge. And we refer to classiness, it's not just the classiness that in the interior, there's a way that the car rides that destroys the WRX. The NVH, the noise, vibrations and harshness, it's much softer in this car. Highway speeds, it's much easier to talk to the person next to you. Taking a turn, everything feels gentle. The steering is accurate, but really similar to the WRX. It's not as weighted as the WRX. Steering feels sharp and direct. Car takes turns perfectly. It manages its weight fine. It's a small car. Feels like a hatchback. And I love hatchbacks. I'm English. And if you don't spec it to this Sport Tech RS trim level, for 30 grand Canadian, it's like 20 something US, you get a really powerful all wheel drive four door car. It's hard to argue with. Here's what you do here's the secret. Throttle House tip buy the base trim WRX. No sunroof, more headroom, remove the suspension and put Olin's in. No, I'm not being paid by Olin's. They're just better. Ugh. It's a WRX. It is a WRX. Still, it's good, I like it. Yeah, well there's no question, it looks a lot more aggressive than the Audi. V very, but very much classy. more. Uh, Although I this suppose... is the top trim, right? This is- this Yes, is... which means we get Brembo's now. That's cool. That's the RS bit. Yes. The RS does mean something. Yes. Yeah, learn from that, Camaro. The Camaro. 
But at that price, though, why wouldn't you get an STI, though? You know what I mean? Because, like, I don't know, you, you better fuel economy, you get the, the twin scroll turbo. Also, you don't need a DCCD center differential when you're driving to the, I don't know, the hospital to go to work, right? Let's talk about this. This is the most base version. The Americans are very lucky because in America, the base version is the middle version. And so it's at least an S line if you're getting Quattro. For us, it's not necessarily an S line. An S line meaning it has the styling cues from the sportier models. Okay. But for 2020, we do now get 18 inch wheels as standard, which is potentially compromises the ride. I don't know about that. Okay, yeah. But it is an Audi, right? And, it, and, and that's why you choose this over that. It looks like a baby A6, a baby A4. So we do get Audi's classic trapezoid, trapezoidal, Trapezoidal. What? Girl, I don't know how to say that word. Are you having a stroke? It's a long word. <laughs> trapezoidal. Trapezoidal. Either way, yes. I'm naming my firstborn son that. Um, okay. but, but the most important thing is it says Quattro. Yes. Oh, see, all this stuff that you just said to me, yeah. that was just like a really long, drawn out way of saying that this looks boring. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a car. Yeah, it does. Uh, interiors? Yeah. Okay. Oh. How'd you take your coat off so quickly? Oh, I went to. Uh... Went to Hogwarts. Okay, so <laughs> we are in an A3. Woo! Yes. Oh, look Screen at this. pops up. Yeah, I think wow. we drove. That was impressive five years it's ago. Beep at us. Beep it is. It's going to beep. That's a lot of beeps. There we go. Passenger airbag is on. That's good news. Everything's on. Is it a Takata though? Will it I don't send shrapnel into off. my neck? Turn off. What's happening? This is okay. I fixed it. Uh, I thought that was the volume. Yeah, yeah. So. Cars. <laughs> How do they work? <laughs> uh, yeah, this used to go down. In the first, in the first gen, it, it just went down. It came, it came from. No, off I know. But you used to be able down. to have the choice. So this off button just turns the screen off. It doesn't actually make the thing oh, go down. Oh, well, that's a bummer. I know because I mean, some people don't like the pop up thing. Yeah, this is out of style now. Really is. It is out of style. I yeah. don't mind it though because the top of this is still below. The uh, that's fair. Edge okay, of the thing. that's fair. Yeah. So at night time, it looks like it's. In. Okay. It is an A3. It is simple in here. It's not as fancy as an A4, although we do have still very good materials. Very solid inside. It's, it, it's an Audi. It's so well made. Do you not think that these look a bit like just a bit breasty? Am I just imagining that? It's been a while, hasn't it, James? Moving on. Yeah. I think what's really exciting is even though this is a base trim and you don't get the digital dash, which or the Audi's virtual cockpit, they virtual call it, cockpit. which I love, yes. it's, you, there is still the most exciting thing ever is you get the steering wheel from a Lamborghini Urus. <laughs> <laughs> Right? How can yeah, you say like, that? Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I don't, I don't know whether everything. that's a compliment to this or an insult to the Lamborghini. It's a very nice steering wheel. It is a lovely steering Honestly, wheel. Honestly, the, you know, the Lamborghini one obviously has... It has lots of, in a Lambo But badge. because this is the base trim, we don't get the flat flat bottom one. Ooh, that's horrible. Yeah, this is no, okay, honestly, this is the thing that I like about Audis more than everything. Everything has a positive click to it. Everything feels incredibly solid. But it is a bit claustrophobic in here. Like it's, it, it is. Like, it's I not feel, super big. Um, it's not super big. Yeah. Years of education. I, I, have, Years. I have two university degrees. Um, Super big. Yeah. Anyway, I don't like the, this iDrive thing. No, and this is not a touchscreen. No. It's so with CarPlay, I still find myself tapping I don't want to complain anymore. Is this all going to be refreshed really, really soon? As the base trim, you do lose some other stuff as well, not just the virtual cockpit. We don't have a heated steering wheel. Yeah, that's a, but, but yeah, like all-wheel drive winter cars. Right, you want that. That doesn't have a heated steering wheel either. Like, oh. come on. Yeah, you've got to spend quite a bit more. And then also, uh, this doesn't have the upgraded sound system. This is just the normal one. Is it okay, though? It's it's fine. It's oh, actually it's good. Oh, yeah. It's not, but like Bang Olufsen. Yeah, that's you know? the best. Uh, uh, can we check out the back seats? No. Can we check out the back seats, James? Let's to. do it. Let's no. check out the back seats no. now. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> this is a Canadian going through there. Oh dear. Oh dear, eh? Yeah, it's not. The legroom's okay, I'm finding. That's is way it? far back. Is That's it? way far back. The this head. is my driving position. Unless you slouch, your head is on the ceiling. Yeah. That not, is not. It's not good. perfect. Like, if you think that this, compare it to the Golf. Yeah, the Golf has way more room than this. Right? And obviously, compared to the WRX, we'll see in a minute. Like, to be fair, I could sit back here, but I wouldn't want to sit back here for more than 30 minutes. No. I think if you're anything less than our heights, depending on who you ask, is five foot ten. Yes. You'd would. be fine in the back seats. This is solid six feet, is what we are. It's solid six feet. Solid six yeah, feet. Yeah, so we're a hard six. Well, you round up. You yeah, round up. Always, in, in Canada, you round up. You round up. It's, it's, it's the in, metric in, system. In my country. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what has also occurred to me is you don't get the S line seats. So Americans, you do. The seats are comfortable, though. I do these like these. These are comfortable. But the S line ones are sporty, and they say S line. Yeah, whatever. Give me the comfort ones. This is not a sports car, so comfort first. Is a WRX a sports car? Ish. Is it comfortable? Ish. Let's go look. Okay. Oh, okay. Instantly more space. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes, a lot more, and the visibility is fantastic. Yeah, this is this windscreen seems massive now. It does. Also, I love these little secondary windows right here. Right, you got this Suc huge view. You see secondary. I said secondary. Secondary. Well, come come to the secondary farm by Thomas. You're Canadian. <laughs> you, you're the one with the weird accent here. Okay. All right. This is completely fine. Absolutely. Totally it's acceptable. Fine. Also facing a refresh soon. So yes, I like the carbon fiber. I like these are the Recaro seats, right? Because it's the RS. Don't like the Recaro seats. You don't like them. No, they're a little stiff. bit too narrow. I find and them stiff. They are stiff. Yeah. And you find too... everything narrow because I have no big donkey donk. Beach. Okay, so this is uh. <laughs> big <laughs> donk donk. <laughs> no, I like this. It's very it's responsive. Nice. It is. It's a good screen. Very sharp. It's far away though. I, I, I you know, when I'm driving this thing, I've realized I never look there though. My eyes are never there. Well, no, because unless there's something that you need on there, there's no reason to look. But that's, that's for why a passenger. Put secondary information there. Primary information is here with this lovely speedometer that you absolutely cannot read at any point. That's no, but that's the Canadianness. I well, feel like the, be, because of kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. Yeah, yeah it's maybe. like 17 kilometers to, to the mile. Yeah, and, and this, the the center speed here is all you need, though. Honestly. What fuel that's, economy are you getting in here? I am getting. I'm averaging 13.8 liters per 100 kilometers, but to be fair, this car is very, very new. 175 kilometers on Literally 175 kilometers on it. Yeah. And we have been kind of driving it aggressively, obviously, right? So that's pretty good. Kind for... of driving it aggressively. It depends who's asking. Yeah. No, I like it in here. The space is, bit, you know, nothing. It doesn't feel as premium as the Audi. Um, no, it's not as well built as the Audi. It doesn't feel as premium, but, but it's in, spacious. But it doesn't nice. have it doesn't have that much less tech. You've, what you got push button start now. <laughs> hey, the top trim. That's the future. The Audi doesn't have much more in the base trim. Once you no. start step, once you start specking it out, you get adaptive Obviously. cruise lane assist. Yep. But which this cannot have. But as they stand, they're not that different technologically. You know where they are different? The back seats. I think we should, I should drive this seats. now. Back seats. So yeah. much better. Much more headroom. Way more. Yeah. But yeah. to be fair to this car, this is probably more similar to the A4 in terms of interior space. Yes. But then the A4 costs quite Way a bit more, more money. So more that's money. one of the ways that the Audi loses. Yeah, but I, I think that these, like everything about the backseat here has more room. Every, like not just the headroom, but the elbow room, the knee room. The suede seats. The nice. doors are bigger and easier to get into. The suede is nice, you're right. Honestly, like in terms of everyday livability and carrying people around, this one wins over the Audi. With out of question, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, the Audi A3. I feel like I want some paddle shifters. It doesn't have any, just to make it a little bit more fun because the WRX is fun and this isn't. All right, WRX. Ah, oh, this ride is a lot stiffer. Got a manual though. And less rev hang. Fewer rev hang? No, less rev hang. Well done, Subaru. About time. Yeah, the steering is good. It's, it's as accurate as the Audi, but it's got a shorter ratio. So it feels more sporting. And the power is there in the top end. You can't fault a WRX, apart from all its faults. It really fills its niche well. Yes, this just feels, it feels a lot more inert than the WRX, but in a good way. If you're not looking for an exciting, engaging driver's vehicle, this is definitely the choice between the two. It makes a lot of noise though, and I can't... No, I can decide. Yeah, none of the noises I'm hearing sound good. Apart from a bit of turbo spool at low speeds, which is nice. But if you want to cough up the dough, you can. There's an S3, which is not the one I would get. I would get the BMW M240i. There's also an RS3, which we drove on the track where it doesn't belong. And Flory in second. Nice. It didn't even give me a traction control warning. That's how well it held. And you don't feel that little bit of delay. The Haudic system requires like 15 degrees of wheel spin before it kicks in the rear torque. This doesn't do that. It's immediately all wheel drive and you feel it. All right, but on the snow, yeah, it, it's definitely an all-wheel drive car. Very Haldex feeling. There's like a, a moment when it goes, I guess you probably put some power to the rear because he's doing some skids in the front. So it goes eventually, just not as aggressively as the WRX does on a loose surface. So in conclusion, the Audi, surprisingly, is an Audi. It's very good at just being an everyday car. It's not super fun to drive. 
But if that's what you're looking for, this is the clear answer. Personally, between these two, I would pick the WRX. Because I want a manual. It's still a nice car to live with, but it's just got a little bit more every day. I really wanted to like the Audi A3, and I do like it, but I wanted to like it so much that I'd rush out and buy it, and it didn't quite do it for me. Those back seats are a bit of a deal breaker, and the trunk is a little bit smaller than the WRX as well. So, I, but I, I'm not a huge fan of the WRX either. It's just too harsh. The manual is more difficult to live with than I would expect, and the ride and the noise, I'm still on the market. Ladies, if I had to buy one of these, I would rather buy the one that I'm driving home with, which is the A3. It's just easy to live with, and it looks smart. So the reality is that neither of these cars are the best versions of themselves. WRX is probably most at home saving you money and being had in the base trim form, and the Audi is probably best in hatchback form, which we can't get here. You win this round, Europe. So neither of these would be our first choices but they definitely both accomplish the task of being compact and all-wheel drive without becoming genericized crossovers. And just for that, we are happy that they exist.